Good day everyone. Today we are going to talk about uh, ISS Robotics. ISS Robotics is uh, a key aspect of the ISS operation and uh, in many ways, not only because uh, it's a complex operation to prepare, to plan and to execute, but also because it's a key element to, uh, to the life of the space station itself. So without these robotic assets, we will not have a space station the way it is right now. And uh, without robotics, so many uh, things that we do on the, st on the station will not be possible. And we will see which one. So this uh, lesson has actually uh, several parts. The very first part is uh, to talk about the elements of ISS robotics. And we will see how, which one we are talking about and how all these elements are actually built. The next one is to make sure that you understand what are these functions. We will describe what are these diff different functions and, uh, and tasks for ISS robotics. So you might have in mind that uh, the robots on board the ISS do this and this and this, but not necessarily. So what I, I will go through the main task that uh, the ISS robotics is uh, covering. Then next, we will see that uh, if you are a scientist, if you are an engineer and you want uh, an experiment flying to the station and being executed outside of the station, so it means not in a pressurized environment, but in the outer shell of the station, like a telescope, like a, a weather scanning system or whatever else, uh, there are certain places and certain interface to take into account uh, uh, on the station and we will see briefly which one are uh, which. Also, in case of uh, specific visiting vehicles, so like uh, SpaceX Dragon, HGV or Orbital, uh, we will see that uh, this visiting vehicle, they cannot dock at any places on the station. They have specific places where they need to, uh, to approach the station and to berth, and we will see uh, which one. Then, of course, an important part is the ISS Robotics is uh, for a large extent uh, using uh, Canadian assets, which are Canadarm2 and Dexter, uh, dubbed as SSRMS and SPDM in the uh, everyday uh, jargon. And we will see how we actually operate these arms. Uh, it means in terms of interface. So uh, if you would be the crew, uh, what you would see if you fly these arms. And if you are the ground, how more or less this is also uh, operated. And finally, we will see that what I will uh, talk about during three quarters of uh, this presentation is mostly what we have right now on board the station. But later on, uh, we will also see what are the different things we are testing on board to enhance the ISS robotics. So not to stick with what we have, which was very important, which is every day still very important. But uh, we are testing new systems, new techniques, uh, as a test bed on board the station for new robots. And I will present mostly the European parts, what we are testing, uh, uh, so from the, from the ESA side. So let's get uh, started with the elements of uh, ISS robotics, and uh, I will put them all in perspective so that you better understand uh, what we are talking about. So the, the first one, in the, which is the main, uh, actor in ISS Robotics is, you might know it as Canadarm2, number two, because Canadarm1 was actually the arm used for the space shuttle. So the Canadian Space Agency decided uh, at the time the space station was decided and voted that uh, Canada will participate to the, to the ISS mostly via robotic assets. And the main robotic assets they decided to produce was Canadarm2 which is an enhancement of Canada 1. Canada 1 was a simpler arm and Canada 2 is a bigger, more complex arm that we use on the station. So, you know SSRMS may be less than Canada 2, but on everyday uh, jargon, we always speak about SSRMS, we never say Canada 2. So during the rest of this lecture, I will use the term SSRMS sometimes refer to Canadarm2, but mostly SSRMS, which stands for Space Station Remote Manipulator System. This is the huge arm that is uh, the main one uh, that we use on board the station. But also, uh, Canada was not the only one to provide robotic aspect to the station, but also the Japanese. So 
Uh, the Japanese uh, decided also to create and to build an arm for their own usage on board the space station, which is the JAMA-RMS, or the Japanese arm, uh, where the acronym stands for uh, uh, JEM, so the JEM is the Japanese Experiment Module, and RMS for Remote Manipulation System. Uh, you can see on this uh, picture that uh, the, the JEM-RMS is definitely smaller than the SSRMS, uh, and it's also less capable, as we will see in a few uh, moments. Also, uh, the arm, the, the large arm SSRMS uh, went up to the station at the early stage of the station, and then uh, the Canada decided to enhance this system using Dexter. Uh, also, again, we don't use this name Dexter on an everyday basis, but we use the term SPDM. SPDM, it's a uh, is able to manipulate smaller payload with smaller interface in more crampy environments and in less accessible environments. And again, as you can see in the order of magnitude, SPDM is definitely smaller than the SSRMS. So the side of the arm allows to manipulate smaller objects and the SPDM is uh, even more complex than SSRMS. It has two arms and a body. So two arms with the body means complicated operations also to plan. And the last item of this space station robotics uh, that we have on board is the MBS. Uh, this is the mobile base. So it's uh, practically speaking a little train that uh, drive along the truss. So you can imagine it's a little trolley uh, that goes from the far end of the truss to the other end of the truss. So it can uh, navigate on these rails for uh, it's about 80 meters of distance that it can traverse from one end to another. Um, and uh, usually this is used as a base, it's a mobile base. So it means the SSRMS, so the big arm can be attached to this little cart and go at different places by just uh, translating around the truss. Just to give it an order of perspective, uh, I put here also a picture of a crew member. A crew member that uh, gives you a little bit the scale of uh, all what we are talking about on, the, on this uh, little uh, diagram. So uh, the arm itself, the SSRMS, is something like uh, 17, well, 7 meters uh, long. And you can see clearly here the, the size of the crew member. Alright, if we take a picture of the space station from above, some from Zenit, and we are looking towards it, uh, and uh, we can already see from this picture three, actually four of the main uh, robotic aspects. I say three or four because it's difficult to see the Japanese arm on this picture. So let's start with the main one. So here you see uh, that the uh, Canada Arm 2, so the SSRMS, is actually parked underneath uh, the US lab right now. And uh, you see uh, how big it is comparing to the rest of the station uh, on, on that picture. Then the mobile base uh, on which the arm can be located is here and it can translate, uh, as I said, a little bit less than 80 meters back and forth from uh, one side to the other side of the truss. So it gives a better range of movement for the arm. Then uh, the, the third guy we talked about is SPDM, so the, the one which is able to manipulate a smaller payload is here depicted in blue. This is the uh, configuration as uh, the, at the time the picture was taken. Now, uh, again, I said uh, we see the fourth arm, which is uh, the Japanese arm in green. The, the Japanese arm here is uh, permanently attached uh, to the side of the uh, GEM module. And uh, you see here, uh, because the picture was taken from above, it looks a little bit smaller, uh, but it's uh, still a, a decent uh, size from the Japanese arm. So, what is the reach of all these arms? So we see all these arms, where can they go? The Japanese arm, if I take this one, because this is the last one that we highlighted here, if we look at it, it can reach practically the entire uh, external palette, external platform, which is in front of the Japanese module. So on this little platform, you have different experiments, different payloads, and then the arm can pick them and move them and translate them the way you want. And it can also take one and put it in the airlock, as we will see later on during this lecture, that there is a little airlock 
um, the Japanese module that you, allows you to take payload from the inside of the station that you can prepare, you attach it and you put it outside via this uh, payload airlock. It's never used by the crew to get out, it's used only for a payload to be moved back and forth uh, outside and inside the station. All right, so this is the reach of the Japanese arms, so uh, the GEM RMS can reach this greenish area. Now, if we look at the rest of the station, if you make a combination of the SSRMS with the MBS, so you take the big arm SSRMS and you attach it to uh, the MBS, so the mobile base, it has a huge reach and this is this red area. So the combination of both allows the SSRMS to reach almost any point of the station up to the Russian segment, which is partially covered. The reason is the Russian segment is not meant to have a lot of robotic activities on that side. So during this class, I was mentioning the SSRMS, the SPDM, the GEMRMS, as well as the MBS. All these guys are located on the international side of the station, the truss, as well as on the various modules on the international side. On the Russian side, the two modules that we have, the FGB, which is the oldest space station module, like launched in 98, and the SM do not have the asset of supporting robotics right now. They are fitted to host uh, the European robotic arm, which is still on the ground right now, and, uh, but we will talk about it at the end of this lecture. So therefore, the red area that you see is the reach of the SSRMS, and uh, it goes almost up to the end of the solar panels. Even the solar panels, I think we can reach it if we have an extension of the arm which was already achieved once in the past of the space station. But the rest, you see, you can, you can access almost anywhere uh, on board the station. Okay, so something that you should understand is the arm can uh, be actually like a caterpillar. So it can be detached, the main arm, so the SSRMS. So if you grab something with your hand, with the manipulator, and uh, you, you grab it, you make the right connections, you are able to detach the shoulder, so that the arm can become uh, another, can really crawl like a caterpillar. So the, the manipulator becomes the shoulder and the shoulder becomes the arm. So the arm is purely symmetrical and can go from one place to another. So that allows the arm to reach all these places because once you detach it, you move it to the mobile base and then you move the mobile base to the place you want and then you manipulate something and you move it back and you can crawl away from the mobile base and go back to the, to the US lab, for instance. 